Most mamas have the goal of breastfeeding their new babies, but when your nipples hurt, it can make you reconsider your plans. Today, we're going to talk about the different causes of nipple pain and what you can do to get quick relief so that you can meet your breastfeeding goals. Welcome back to Every Mama's Midwife. If you're new, my name's Jess. I'm a certified nurse midwife and infertility mom. As always, if you're having pain, please consult with your healthcare provider. I just had my second baby about seven weeks ago, and breastfeeding has been going really well this time, but my first time around, I was in agony. With my daughter, during my first two weeks postpartum, I developed cracks in both of my nipples as well as a nipple blister. I would literally grit my teeth and curl my toes to get through each nursing session. There were multiple times that I cried if I saw her sticking her tongue out or rooting around for a nipple because I did not want to endure having to feed her again. Part of my pain was due to one of the most common causes of nipple pain, tongue ties or lip ties. Both of my children have had lip ties on their upper lip, making it difficult for them to flare their lips around my nipple and get a good latch. A lip tie is a tight band of tissue that can hold your baby's upper lip close to their gums. This makes their lip more likely to curl inwards when they nurse. With a tongue tie, there can be a tight band of tissue between your baby's tongue and the floor of their mouth, and it can even extend all the way to the tip of their tongue, making it almost heart-shaped, and it makes it difficult for them to extend their tongue over their lower lip. These bands of tissue can be clipped or lasered by a pediatrician in a procedure called a phrenectomy. Most of the time, a phrenectomy will cause problems with latching and breastfeeding, including nipple pain, but sometimes I have seen patients take their babies in for that procedure and then their babies wouldn't latch at all afterwards. So make sure you go over all of the risks and benefits with your pediatrician if this is something that you want to consider. Fortunately for both of my kiddos, I've just been able to manually flip their lip each time they latch. With my daughter, she didn't need help flipping her lip by the time she was about two months old. She started to do it spontaneously. And with August, he's already started flipping his lip on his own a lot of the time. Sometimes I still have to do it for him. Another reason that breastfeeding can be painful is if you have flat nipples. This was also something that contributed to my pain when I was breastfeeding my daughter. Your midwife or OBGYN can tell you if you have flat nipples, if it's something that you're concerned about, but odds are you already know. If as a young woman you saw nudity in movies and thought, hmm, everyone's nipples are a lot more prominent than mine, you probably have flat nipples. For the longest time, I assumed that basically all film actresses had breastfed babies prior to their film careers, and that's why their nipples look different than mine. And then when I became a labor and delivery nurse and I heard the term flat nipples, I realized, oh yeah, great, there actually is something wrong with me. Awesome. Anyway, for flat nipples, you have a few options. You can try using a nipple shield. A nipple shield is a thin silicone cover that goes over your nipple and helps protect it, as well as helps your baby latch. Because the shield is more prominent than your nipple, it helps stimulate the baby to suck if you have flat nipples or inverted nipples, both of which are a lot more common than you'd think. I tend to recommend nipple shields more if you're having difficulties getting your baby to latch at all, but they can also be helpful with minimizing trauma to your nipples. I like these ones from Medela. I'll drop an affiliate link in the description. I personally never got my daughter to latch over a nipple shield, so I went with option number two. Option number two is just doing everything you possibly can to protect your nipples while they get pulled out into a less flat shape. This process takes a couple of weeks, but you can help prevent cracking and blisters by applying lanolin after every single feed. I discussed this in my last video, but lanolin is a natural substance found in sheep wool that you can use to lubricate and protect your nipple. If you're vegan, you can use nipple butter instead, but as I've said before, I think lanolin is the absolute best when it comes to protecting your nipple. I have affiliate links for both my favorite lanolin and my favorite nipple butter in the description. I recommend being generous with the lanolin on your nipple, but also applying a generous amount to your breast pads so that way when you put a breast pad inside your bra, it doesn't automatically absorb all the lanolin that you just put on your nipple. If you already have trauma to your nipples, like cracks or blisters, you can make warm Epsom salt soaks for your nipple in like a shot glass or a small cup and apply it over your nipple, and you can do this for about 15 minutes a few times a day. Breast milk is another wonderful remedy for cracked or painful nipples. So after you soak your nipples or after a feed, you can let some breast milk dry on your nipple before you apply your lanolin. The other most common reason that breastfeeding can be painful is thrush. Thrush is when you develop a yeast infection on your nipple, and there can also be yeast growing in your baby's mouth. I experienced this one in the first two weeks with my daughter as well, and I would describe the pain as a burning pain on my nipple, but then it would be a sharp shooting pain through my breast when she latched. If you have thrush, your nipple will look bright pink or red and just very angry. 
You may also notice a white coating in your baby's mouth, but it's hard to identify on breastfed babies because they typically have milky looking tongues anyway. Mild cases of thrush can be treated with all-purpose nipple ointment. This is something that you can have your healthcare provider send a prescription for into a compounding pharmacy. That can get pretty pricey though, so you can also make your own. You just need equal parts of over-the-counter 2% myconazole cream, which is an antifungal cream, over-the-counter hydrocortisone, and over-the-counter polysporin antibiotic ointment. Once you mix it up, just apply a thin layer to your nipples after every feed. You can also try gentian violet, which is an over-the-counter antifungal antiseptic that will turn both your nipple and your baby's mouth purple. And I mean really purple. But a lot of mamas with thrush swear by it. I don't have a brand that I usually recommend. I typically send my patients to the compounding pharmacy in town to pick it up because I know that if I'm diagnosing them with thrush, they do not want to wait for an Amazon order. That being said, it is available for purchase on Amazon. For more severe cases of thrush, you may need a prescription for fluconazole from your healthcare provider. Fluconazole is an oral antifungal medication that you may have taken if you've ever had a vaginal yeast infection. One product that I do not recommend for nipple pain are gel pads. They do not breathe at all, and they may make you more likely to develop thrush or may make your thrush worse if you already have it. And of course, if you're having persistent nipple pain, it never hurts to see a lactation consultant. You can check with your health insurance, but a lot of times insurance will cover those visits. Please give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful. It really helps the video reach other people who might need it. In the coming weeks, I'll show you what a realistic day looks like feeding a newborn, how to increase your milk supply, and I promise we are working on the home birth footage. Make sure to subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss those uploads. Thank you so much for watching.